All right, mate, this is it. Here we are, then. Thanks, driver. Won't keep you a moment, Jack. New listeners, start here. Hi, swingers and oral pillionists. Welcome aboard. Join this album, where we'll be travelling at a height of mere millimetres, a width of 12 inches and a speed of 33 and a third. Our suspected time of revival is anybody's guess, and I would remind you that there's no smoking in the toilets. And no bonging either. This album has a censorship rating of extra SSW, but should you hear anything that you consider to be even slightly offensive, please don't hesitate to let us know. We might like to use it again. <laughs> Thank you. This album was recorded before a live studio audience. It could get here. I'd like to see some hearing aids, please. Oh, dear, yes, of course, but... What you mean is you'd like to hear some hearing aids, don't you? <laughs> now, how much are your hearing aids? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, they range in price from a dollar thirty at the bottom end to two thousand dollars. Of course, that's with a the... big difference. How come? <sighs> well, with the two thousand dollar model, you get absolutely. What about the one for a dollar thirty? Here, look, I'll show you. There it is. It's basically just a button on a string. Yeah, you... but that's just a button on a string, basically. Yeah, I just said that. How does that make you hear better? Well, you see, you put the button in your ear and the string in your pocket, and people immediately start talking Learning louder. to oh. shout, I'll take it! Yes, I'm sure you'll find it most it's satisfying. It's from my mother. She's partially deaf. Oh. Well, I suppose that's from people shouting at no, her. No, it's from people shouting at her. Oh. What a rude person! Impulse perfume. If a strange man comes up to you, and gives you flowers. That's impulse. Oh, it's also very embarrassing. I can't accept flowers from you. I mean, I'm a married man. Oh, oh well, maybe just a quick pims. <laughs> impulse, the perfume that attracts strange men. For me? Oh, thanks very much. Hello? Joy Manure, JP, for less than best. I'm president of the Australian Varicose Vein Society and I recommend less than best to everyone. Take this week, for example. Everything in the store has been slashed. That's why it's so cheap. For those of you who don't make your own clothes, Three-piece vinyl suits, one dollar. And Taiwanese children's underwear, with very little risk of disease, only two cents per item. Less than best, where you don't pay for any fancy quality. What a load of bullshit. Complete and utter bullshit. Oh, don't answer that, the man's a bore. What do you remember most about your Nana? Ah, uh, her apple pies. They were really special. Mm. And what we didn't eat for dinner at night, we ground up into a smooth, fine, creamy paste and massaged firmly into Nana's blotchy but shapely calves. Oh, uh, I remember Nana's the way she used to breathe. Nana's apple pies. <sighs> Nana's still looking after you. <coughs> oh, yes, and we're still looking after Nana. Rub, 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 rub. Rub -dum -dum -rub -dum -dum. What a rude person. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. Excuse me. Uh, could you please uh, direct me to the makeup department? Oh, certainly. Just down the corridor, past the calamari pool. Oh, thanks. That's right. Uh, hi. Yes. I hope you don't mind me asking. Yes. Uh, but aren't you, you know, Alan Squeal? Like oh, I'm... spot on, sweetie. Oh, look. Uh, there's something I've always wanted to ask you. Yes. Uh, if you don't mind. Yes, go ahead. Uh, do you prefer natural grass or astroturf? Well, personally, I've never gotten off on astroturf. It's oh. too hard to roll. Uh, what about herbaceous borders? Oh, uh, well, think? we did have a herbaceous border once, mm -hmm. but the police came and took him away. 
And his plants. Oh, gee, look, thanks, Alan. That's right. And I love the frog. Oh, thanks. Uh, did you make it yourself? Yeah, excuse me, I have to go now. Oh. I think I just heard the postman's whistles. Olivia Newton-John, the Beautiful. BGs, Peter oh. Allen, ACDC, Little River Band, Air Supply, yeah. household names internationally. Right. Our next guest, Martin Ranshoff, yeah, is equally successful and uh, also... More, more successful. Oh, I sorry. Think, yeah. He's also an Australian. Right. Martin, in fact, you must be one of the most successful record producers ever to come from Australia. Look, I, I would be the most successful oh, record producer. sorry, <laughs> the most. In, yeah. in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you've had, what, 40 gold records? Right, right, yeah. This year, Donny, I've had 40 gold records. Gosh. Plus the platinums and... Uh, Far out. I also make all my own clothes. Fantastic. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. No, yeah. it's fantastic. Right on. Could you tell me, uh, uh, how did you get your first break into the music industry? I gotta tell you, I, I, I never really wanted to be in rock and roll music, you know? It was a, really a thing that my folks made me do. They were in the business, theatrical really? type. Uh-huh, yeah. It's, it wasn't my gig at all, you know? I just Gosh. fell into it. Well, what did you really want to do yourself? You want to know? Yeah. I always wanted to be a dry cleaner. That's what I wanted to do. Press, I'm sorry? Press those clothes, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good one. You're putting me on. I'm not Come putting on, you on, man. I wanted to get into <laughs> dry cleaning, but it's very hard to break in, you know? It's sort of a closed shop thing. And the, oh. The gig I, is a tough one. I, I rap I, 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 I tell you, yeah. I think the Arts Council should really give grants to talented young dry cleaners, you know, aspiring dry cleaners. But it's really hard, man, I tell Did, you. Do I sort of get the impression here that you'd still like to break into dry cleaning? Oh, yeah, beautiful, you know. I figure I'll, I'll go on making gold records, sure, hit records during the day, 9 yeah, to 5, and yeah. uh, study dry cleaning at night, you know, at tech. Yeah. Practice on the weekends, until I get a break, you know. Well, I, I suppose in a way it's an old familiar story, isn't oh, it? I mean, aspiring dry cleaners being forced to go into the entertainment industry because right there's on. no place for them in their chosen field. Right it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's just got to be a place for kids who want to, you know, be dry cleaners too. Right, think, yeah. right. Well, uh, how about it, Canberra? I mean, how about some assistance for our aspiring young dry cleaning hey. talents? <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Martin. Hey, that's okay, darling. Yeah, I had to bring in this uh, dry cleaning of yours anyway. Hey, uh, do you like the way the pink frocks come up? I put a lot of time on it. Oh, that looks great. Hey, creases, hey? You, you know, I made this one myself. Hey, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Pity about those nasty stains, man. Uh, no, don't worry about the stains. This next bit's all in uh, close-up, just headshots. Hang on, I'll zip, cool. I'll zip you up. <laughs>
so happily married, Mama, yeah. I got kids, one, two, three, and they're goddamn near as perfect as their mother and me. Internationally famous skin diver, Ben Krop. Ben, did your calamari get his whiskers today? No, no, he doesn't have whiskers. He's a prepubescent calamari. In fact, his tentacles haven't even dropped yet. Not the full squid. Oh, hi, Madge. Hi, Jane. You're looking well and been sick. Oh, no, it's the dishwashing, Madge. My hands have been getting so pruney. Ah, oh, look, just put them in this bowl of green stuff, dear. You should be using napalm olive, Jane. Napalm olive? Yes, Ugh. yes, you're soaking in it. Oh, look, bum, no hands. Where are my hands, Madge? Never mind that, dear. You're right now. Napalm olive gets rid of unsightly hands, so you can't do the dishes. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to be sick, Madge. <laughs> oh, God, I'm soaking in it. Professor Julius Summer Milner. Ah, good day to you. In my career in science, I have never made a significant discovery. I have never invented a cure for a terminal illness or produced a significant nuclear weapon. But I have managed to put over 60,000 eggs into milk bottles. I thank you. Cryonics, or freezing bodies after death and then storing them until science finds the key to immortality, yeah. is pretty expensive at $65,000 a pop. Oh, or uh, a nanakin. Yeah. 65000 for a nano right. or the little, you know, yeah, they'll yeah. do anyone. Uh, Australian inventor Bob Gladfinger feels that he has a way of putting immortality within the reach of the average family. Freeze a jolly good fair, hey, <laughs> freeze a jolly good fair, yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Bob, uh, what is yeah. your cryonic concept? Are you ready for this, Ken? Yes. Oh, firstly, good day, Kenny. You know, <laughs> the day, nice that lovely day, lovely God's, day country God's, that. God's country, right? Would not yes. be dead for quids, eh? No. But if you were to die there, Ken, silently in the night, you'd do well to slumber into eternity with the Bob Gladfinger Hi C E. Hey, Ken. I C E. What's that? I dot C dot E dot Ken. Yeah, it stands for individual cryonic esky marketing, eh? <laughs> the ice device. I see. Yeah. No, I C E. No, what I meant was. Um, well, how does it work, Bob? Well, Kenny, we uh, pack the esky up with dry ice here, mm -hmm. yeah, and mm -hmm. then we put in the loved one, Ken, yeah. and freeze them until there's a cure, you know, in the future. Yes, like they did with Walt Disney. Like they did with Walt Disney, yeah, the well-known American animator, eh, Ken? <laughs> right. Frozen solid, right. stiff as a drawing board, you might say. Suspended animation, mm. hey? Yeah. A little cryptic humour there, yes, Ken, yeah. Yes. Uh, Bob, it isn't very big, though. I mean, it looks like a regular-sized esky. I mean, you couldn't store very much in that, could you? No, I mean, uh, no not much at all, really. Small. Just the head, you know, Ken? Mm. Yeah, but that's the latest trend, eh? Quick while you're ahead, Kenny. Hey, uh, still, yes. if you want to store the whole body, you know, mm -hmm. you can do what we did with my mum. Yes. Just convert the old ridgy digit home, you know, the old family fridge. Guess whose mum's in a whirlpool? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bob, uh, could you tell me how it works? Oh, much easier to show you, Ken, yeah. Right. Uh, this is me demo model here, right. the old esky, and what we do is we pack her up with dry ice, you know. Yes, yes. And, uh, and, and that's a dummy's head there, right? How did you know it was Enzo, Ken? I'm sorry? You're telling me that's your brother Enzo? Exacto Monte, Kenny, yeah. He's my testee. You've packed his head in, in ice. I mean, isn't that dangerous, Bob? Oh, no, no, Ken, no. I always wear gloves when handling the dry ice. No, no, oh, no. Oh, yeah, otherwise nasty no, burns. That's you know? not what I meant, yeah. Bob. I mean, I, I meant is Enzo all right? I don't know, Ken. His nose is cold, you know. That's always a good sign, isn't it? Hey? Oh, dear. Uh, he's cool. Well, well, OK. Well, uh, good luck, Bob Gladfinger, and thank you. Uh, Oh, Kenny, do you like a cold one? I've got a couple of cans in here as well. Hang on. Oh, well, oh. oh gee, thanks, Bob. I have one myself, <laughs> yeah. Great. Put you down for one? Oh, uh, well... A 
Ah, yes, hello and all that sort of nonsense and welcome to the wide world of sport. And goodness, what a show full of items we have for you today. Uh, both lively and action-packed and full of vitality. Something for everyone. Uh, because, as Britt Eklund said, one man's meat is as good as the next cobes, uh, which is just about the most unheard of thing I've ever heard of. Uh, but I diverge, uh, and I'll preempt that later. Uh, meanwhile, I have here a letter in writing uh, from a fan who says that he not only designs and makes all his own clothes, but he objects to the way that football players in particular back answer referees when ordered off the field. Uh, well, madam, I think you have to try and see it from the player's point of view. Uh, it gets pretty intense out there. And how would you like to be pulled off by the referee during the game? Surely the answer is as obvious and as plain as it is self-abhorrent. Uh, now I think we'll take a look audio-wise at a replay of one of our classic fairly good moments in sport. Uh, Melbourne Cup Day 1981 and the famous phantom call. AJ, they're in the starter's hands and the red light is flashing and racing now and immediately the sink pirates and who's causing a few problems. Well, it's the phantom himself who's making the early running in the 1981 Melbourne Cup. In the familiar colours, of course, a grey shirt, cap, armbands and skull ring. Diana Palmer second at this stage with Rex Devil, dead ancestors well placed and the Pygmy people moving strongly now but just not the stride to match the grey. 1,000 metres from home now and the Phantoms cleared away a length with the strength of 10 Tigers and as they make the turn for home the Skull Cave is gathering them in with Dead Ancestors putting in a withering run. Young Rex would be tiring at this stage but he's young and there'll be plenty more chances for him. Only 200 metres left in the Cup of 81 and Devil a complete outside chance charges for the post with Diana Palmer giving the Phantom ahead but it's all Diana Palmer and the Phantom. Diana Palmer puts her head in front now and you can put away the glasses. She's got the whip out and she's getting on top of the Phantom. She'll make it if she's got the stamina and it's Diana Palmer coming home first in the Melbourne Cup with the Phantom a creditable second and uh, we're still waiting for the Devil to pass the post. Yes, yeah, so what a classic. 100% out of 100 for that one, all right. Uh, now, uh, meanwhile, I think uh, we'll go over to uh, this week's edition of the passing competition in which a footballer of repute uh, throws a ball at a board with a hole in it and scores points. Uh, OK, Mick, uh, let her rip, mate. Uh, seven. Uh, two, that's uh, seven and two is... Uh, now, no, hang on, Mick, uh, will you a sec, mate? We've got to add up the score. Um, let's say seven uh, plus two equals... Uh, what do you reckon, Gary? Oh, no, no, hang on, Mick, will you? Oh, dearie gracious me, that's so untenably incredulous, I can almost hardly believe it. Um, oh, look, I'll tell you what, why don't we cross over now uh, for some cricket highlights uh, from England, overseas, and Risky Bernard. Yes, Bernard. And uh, good evening. Risky Bernard here, coming at you from a great height on the satellite. Miracle of modern technology. And uh, what a wonderful day we have planned here today too. Uh, car giveaways, uh, player of the match awards, catch of the month, uh, replays of earlier tests and catches of the month, uh, live interviews recorded earlier, and of course we will be touching lightly on the cricket. And uh, what a sensational session we're witnessing here today, Tony. Oh yes, Risk, it's real beautiful. Oh, shit. Indeed, uh, even as I speak, Big Bird uh, Joel Garner has just dropped one. <laughs> And hello, here's a turn up. Uh, the Aussie skipper is appealing against the light. Oh, appealing against the light? Well, please yourself, but I don't mm. find him appealing no matter where he stands. Uh, have you uh, seen him in that pink frock? Oh, very stimulating. Mm, made mm. it himself too, I believe. Oh, yeah. bullshit. Anyway, pink's not my colour, but I might try and borrow the pattern from him anyway. Bullshit. Yes, and uh, for those of you who've just joined us, I should point out that several members of the Australian team are at present off the ground. Oh, goodness me, Risky, a wonderful day's play. But I do wonder what they've been smoking. Oh, bullshit. No, no, Tony. I, I mean, off the ground, not in that sense. Well, that's the trouble with you, Rasta bloody ferians. I, I meant they're off the ground back at the pavilion. Are taking a drinks break. In fact, I could go a share but myself. Oh, it's funny you should say that, Risky. I rather fancy a calamari tonic. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, bullshit. No, I just want a plain old Aussie beer with a little umbrella in it. Oh, yes. No, I'm, I might have a bowl of Nutri-Grain with a little umbrella in it. Oh, bullshit. Oh, yes, a, a rum and coke for me too. Mine's dark, of course. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> yes, bullshit. I think Keith Miller just said bullshit too. Yes, but it's hard to tell with Keith. He feels that it evaporates from the glass. Uh, yes, yes, hello. 
Uh, hello, look, I uh, would like to speak to someone in charge. I want to make a complaint. Yes, well, I'm the uh, producer of the album. Uh, yes, look, well, look... Just a sec. Could, uh, could you keep your voice no, down, please? No, I won't. I won't. have a sketch in progress. I have They've got just... my voice down. This is about as calm as I'm going to get because, look, this is a rude album. It's called a rude album, sir. I know, but it really is rude. It's got language on it. You're talking Bad about language. the repetitive use of the word bullshit. Look, we well, have researched the word bullshit and we have discovered that in all demographics, 10 to 17, 18 to 24, 20... I don't care, the word I don't is perfectly care. acceptable. I don't care if you make your own clothes or however clever you are outside of the industry, you don't know the rules. I'll get this record banned. You'll never get it to air unless you remove that offensive word. It is not an offensive word. The word Jill thinks it is. Uh, look, look, I have a lot of work to do here. I've got side two coming up. We're making the frocks for the next sketches on the other Another side. Another thing, you and mentioned calamari earlier on. That's rude too. Calamari is not rude. But you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I'm sorry. Bullshit is not rude. Ah, uh, bullshit. Anyway, I'm taking this record off, son. Uh. Okay, uh... Uh, uh, excuse, uh, uh, now look, uh, you'll give me some sort of uh, signal or, or cue thing uh, before you start the tape, won't you? Oh, indeed, sir, yes. We'll, we'll tell you to stand by <coughs> when we're ready for you. Okay, Good, thank you. Well, no, otherwise, I was just thinking, you know, it could be embarrassing or something, you know, like, well... Yeah, look, don't worry. Better up than any. <laughs> Yes, we're not, right. No, we're not rolling tape yet. Fine, J fine. Just stand by. Okay? Right, right, OK, right. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, do I wait uh, for the mm -hmm. anthem uh, before uh, speaking? No, 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 the opening music will be added later, oh, OK? Right, we're, right. We're just doing your speech yes. now. OK, Thank you, sir. OK. Uh, stand by, please. Uh, 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 you don't think uh, the black leather trousers are a bit, well, you know, over no, the top, no, no, do you? No, 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 you look fine, Mr. Fine, Cummings, fine. Please. Yes, fine. Uh, and although, if I may make one small comment... Yes, yes. One earring is the fashion. And studs, oh. not drops. Oh, and well, I'm new at this sort of thing, you know. Oh, I'm, rock and roll. Yes. Yes. Don't, don't worry, sir. Look, everything's fine. Just stand by to record. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Standing by in the studio. Take one. Hello. Uh, as your Prime Minister, uh, Tammy and I take great pleasure in, you know, uh, being asked to say a few words about this recording, uh, which we are confident uh, will mark the beginning of a new era in gramophone records. Just because one uh, spends one's time uh, mostly dealing with, you know, uh, top-level stuff uh, and everything, uh, doesn't mean uh, that one doesn't also like to take time out occasionally uh, to lie around the lodge, uh, uh, getting out of it and listening to phonograph records. <coughs> oh, yes. Uh, why, uh, oneself uh, has over a dozen Gary Glitter discs. Over a dozen, and, and that doesn't include microgroove LPs. And uh, no, uh, yes, uh, one thinks uh, wholeheartedly uh, that Australian recording artists and things uh, have shown the world, uh, you know, that Australian talent is equal to the best that the world has to offer. Uh, well, look, uh, look at groups like uh, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, ABBA, the Who. Oh, oh, The Who, yes, well, um, uh, um, top stuff, uh, yes, well, uh, those groups are equal, surely, uh, to anything uh, from overseas, uh, surely. Uh, one is certain that you are as proud of them as 1am, uh, uh, as, as I am. But seriously, uh, if one may for a moment, uh, there is another good reason uh, why you should be proud uh, to purchase this album. Uh, that is because... Your government and mine uh, is releasing it as a retaliatory measure against the Soviet presence in Poland and Russia. Uh, and one doesn't have to tell you what that means, uh, fortunately. Uh, but uh, one mustn't digress too far because they've told me uh, that if one goes on too much, uh, they'll just cut one off. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, they were just joking. <laughs> OK, thank you very much, sir. That's fine. Come in and we'll have a listen to that one. And now you will let me hear this before you put it on the record, won't you? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. A and you won't forget the anthem, will you? No, sir, no. We're going to put that down right now.
with his muzzle on I'm a punk He's a punk I'll never help me dead Cut the lawn I'm a punk He's a punk I'll take drugs and get drunk I'll take drugs and get drunk I'll take drugs and get drunk I'm a punk I'm a you think that I'm a cunning stunt I'm a punk Listening to that last track, I feel like a young man again. I wish one would come past. Oh, look, there's one now. Oh, I won't go near the garden shed anymore unless I know George is big on it. In fact, I wouldn't even go near George anymore unless he sprayed himself, you know. Oh, well, look, I agree. I wouldn't dream of letting Stan kiss me unless he's big on his lips and his tongue. Yeah, especially his tongue. Oh, especially. Yeah, I always spray the kitty's underwear with big on. Don't want any nasty little surprise. I, I wouldn't even take the pill unless it's been sprayed with Vagon Yeah, well, I first. wouldn't even breathe unless the air's or been Vagon. Or eat. Right, yeah. Or, or anything. Right, or even sit in the same room as somebody else. Or, you know? or even talk to anybody who hasn't been Vagon. Or live in the same street as them. Or be of the same nationality or skin yeah, colour. Right, Ugh. yeah. Listen, you want a quick squirt of Vagon? Oh, no, don't touch that can until it's been Vagon. Yeah, good thinking. Could a bank manager be interested in leather underwear, rubber panties and leather suspender belts with oh. sheer mesh stockings, the thrill of a stiletto heel in the back, the ecstasy of studded bondage straps tight around the torso, the excruciating pain of a hot brand against the buttock, or the orgasmic frenzy of a rhythmic lashing with a spike bullwhip. Abe Wallace of the Commonwealth is. We're a bit worried about Abe. What do you remember most about your Nana? Uh, her apple pies. They were really special. Why? She made them out of calamari. Nana's apple pies. Made from real calamari. Hi, Len. How are you going? G'day, Len. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Not no. good, but... I'll be honest bad. with you. You don't look bad or good. You look a bit... Worried, Worried, Len? Lean, Worried. Yeah. Well, I'm a bit worried. What's the problem, Len? Getting a bit uh, thin up on top, you know, mate? Yes, I noticed yeah. that, Len. So is your hair. Mm, yeah, yeah, my hair, yeah. It's getting thin. Maybe I should go to one of them massage parlours and, and get a scalp massage, Len. Oh, no, Len. I reckon your best bet's a transplant. A transplant, eh, Len? Yeah. Transplant, you say. Go on. I never thought of that, Len. Oh, yeah. Lots of famous people get transplanted. Yeah. yeah. Only thing is, Len, uh, mm. wouldn't I look a bit funny with a kidney on me forehead? Um, well, you could just wear a bigger beanie, Len. Go on. Hmm? The Tasmanian Tigum Safari. They're extinct, that's why nobody goes. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, yes, Wayne. Yeah, okay. 
Right. OK, bye-bye. Wayne won't be home for dinner tonight. What's that, Patricia? Wayne won't be home for dinner tonight. Who was that on the phone, Patricia? It was Wayne. He won't be home for dinner oh, tonight. OK, OK, cut it. I mean, oh, didn't you see going? the light on? I saw the light on and you're using a real woman. Yes, well, you weren't here. You were in the wardrobe We've department. Been... Of course I was in the wardrobe department, getting a nice new pink frock for the sketch so oh, I'd look nice. Yeah, well, I thought oh, we'd hell, use that's... a real woman, that's, that's all. That's for you. We've never used a real woman before. It's bad luck. Anyway, oh, everyone says that. I heard of an album that went down off the coast of France with all hands because they had a real woman on board. Oh, well, are you ready? Just now. think of the boys. It's bad luck. The crew will get really restless yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, look, I'm sorry, love. I didn't know he was going to turn up. He's yeah, been tristing lovely, around sweetie. outside. Yeah, Thanks a lot, get anyway. get out of it. Yeah. OK, from the top, if uh, we can. I've lost the mood now. Settle down. Here we go. Uh, yes, Wayne, yeah. OK, right, bye. Bye, sweetie. Uh, look, Wayne won't be home for dinner tonight. What's that, Patricia? Uh, Wayne won't be home for dinner tonight. Who was that on the phone, Patricia? Wayne, he, he won't be home for dinner tonight. You're keeping something from me, Patricia. No, David. Yeah, well, who was that on the phone? I told you. What are you really trying to say, Patricia? Say oh, it! Just that Wayne won't be home for dinner tonight, that's all. Ah, was that Christine? No, David, it was Wayne. Patricia, I want the truth but now. But, David, hey, I... Wait, wait a minute. Does oh, Angela know about this? Do you know what Fiona would say? And I mean, Bruce has been waiting for an excuse to change his will. That would mean that Alec would be onto it in no time. And you must know how Roger feels about Deborah. She must have told you. No, I, 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 Patricia, oh. I want you to be honest with me. Who was that on the phone? It was Wayne. He no, rang no, to say no, that he... Patricia. Look, it was Paul, wasn't it? Look, you don't have to keep it from me. I know, I know, because Alec told Liz and Alan, and God knows where Christine fits into all this. Oh, David, please, oh, you're paranoid. I want the truth, Patricia. Please, you must tell oh. me. I know it hasn't been easy for you, all this murder and incest and lying and stuff, but, but, but if you don't tell me who was on the phone, we're all in trouble. David... David, listen to me. It was Wayne. I'll tell you once more, it was Wayne, and he rang to say he won't be home for dinner. That's all. That's oh. all. Well, for heaven's sake, old girl, sometimes I just don't understand you. I mean, why didn't you just say so in the first place? <laughs> By the way, uh, what is for dinner? Oh, calamari. Flambe. Ah, oh, look, uh, I don't think I'll be in for dinner either. No, let's mm. pop out for a burger. Second thoughts. Where's that real woman Tennis great, Yvonne Crawley. Over the years, I've developed my own special style. Backhand's part of it. Concentrate on your own style, and you can be the best. Go on, it's lunchtime. Ah, uh, better not. I'm still having trouble after last night's chicken, you know. <laughs> Uh, oh, there it goes again. Uh, I, I, I think I better go and lie down. Oh, oh yeah, don't come in the house. Don't mind me fussing, Joan, but Bub's crying. I just brought her in. Oh, yes, perhaps she needs changing. Well, go ahead and change her, darling. Betty, you're a more experienced mother than I am. Could I ask your advice? That's what big sisters are for. You mean about changing the baby? Yes. And what do you think I could change her for? How about a nice blender? Or an egg slicer? Oh, no, it's all right. She doesn't need changing at all. <laughs> she just needs a shave. Of course. Oh, hi. <laughs> you caught me shaving. Uh, I was a dedicated blade shaver until my wife bought me a Remington electric razor. I was so impressed that I bought the company. I'll bet you wish that you were rich enough to do things like that. <laughs> nani, nani, nani. Oh, Christ, I cut my leg. What do you remember most about ah. your nana? Don't you want to know what I remember most about my nana? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. What do you remember most about your nana? Oh, the taste of her apple pies. <laughs> or perhaps the smell. Ah, ah, the smell of apple pies. No, the smell of nana. <laughs> she was a very slovenly woman. Brain was gone. Ah, oh, yes, tragic. Should have put her in a home, I suppose. <laughs> ah, how do you feel about a slice? Fingers, Volker here, mit an opportunity for you to check out your headspace mit the aid of our special audio test pattern. The test pattern, researched and shown to be preferred by 9 out of 10 dentists, 
eight out of work truckers and two out of a chemist. Now, let's check that your little ears are correctly tuned and balanced. Not in quite spoils one's enjoyment of sound as much as blurry ears, uh, as illustrated here by this self-portrait of Vincent van Gogh wearing his headphone. Now, to capture the full authentic sound of this album as it leaves the basic black vinyl, lie flat on your back, like us, write your name and undress on the back of a friend and sit by the phone until we call you. Thank you. Test, a uh, testing, a uh, testing one, a uh, test two, a uh, test three. Uh, yes, uh, Risky Benno here, and of course that was the third and final test. Uh, good evening. really like? Uh, the Labour Party. Uh, uh, beer. Uh, and uh, uh, trial bikes. Uh, A leading Jack Thompson impersonator. Australian rainforests are among the most beautiful in the world, with proper wood and everything. And we have to work to keep it that way, natural and tranquil. That bloody trail bike looked like Bob Hawk. I'd heard he was an off-road scholar. Hey, Bob. Bob. Have you got a license to ride that sound effect? Oh, bum. 
hammer. He's gone and scared me bloody horsey. Shit, that's the only trouble with rainforests. Rain and forest. Taxi! Take me down that track, please, mate. Which track? You'll have to be more specific than that, I'm afraid. I'm not here. Track one, side one. Right. And hold the bullshit. <laughs> 